are we to make of Kramer Fave Edwards Life Sciences, the medical device maker that's focused on fighting heart disease, including a, a revolutionary non-invasive heart valve replacement? For much of last year, the medical device stocks roared higher. Edwards led the way. This was a one part of a healthcare uh, system that really did work in 2016. And while the stock briefly lost its mojo, falling uh, to 121 and from to all, all the way down to 80 right before the election, it's come roaring back. It is up to 119 as of today. In fact, Edwards has now given us a 27% gain for 2017. So can the stock continue to climb? Right now, Edwards is in its quiet period. The company reports next week, so we're not going to talk about anything near term, okay? But we do want to talk about some of the latest innovations and the broader medical device industry. So let's check in with Mike Musalem. He's the chairman and CEO of Edwards Life Sciences. Get a big picture read on the business. Mr. Musalem, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. How are you, Mike? Have a seat. to be here. Thanks. You know, I first actually really uh, got to know you when, uh, when my father was in a hospital in University of Pennsylvania. And one of the younger doctors said to me, you have got to hear about this Edwards Life Science. We were cracking people's chests open. Oh, yeah. And then they came up with this. And now we can do procedures that we could only do on 50-year-olds all the way up to people in the 80s. This is remarkable, how'd you do it? Well, it's a, it's a long story. There's been a, a great evolution in technology and surgery is still very important and certain right. patients, uh, really, their life depends on surgery. But this idea uh, came about Ah, it's now f almost 20 years ago, and the first implant done about 10 years ago, and it's revolutionized uh, the, really the treatment for these patients. So think about the fact that rather than opening a person's chest, stopping their heart, actually that you can, the chest open, you like can it's introduce Civil it. War time, right? Yeah, I could run you through a quick history. Sure, actually, please do. actually, our company was founded 60 years ago next year okay. uh, on the very first commercially available heart valve. It was created by Lowell Edwards. That's who the company is named after. And you know, when the ventricle squeezed, that uh, the valve opened and then it closed. Uh, saved a lot of people's lives. Some okay. of the problems though, blood thinners were necessary to keep blood clots from forming. 20 years later, the advent of tissue valves. They mm -hmm. started out as pig's heart valves because they were the closest thing to human anatomy and ultimately evolved to what exists today and this is the market leading surgical heart valve okay. today. Uh, opens and closes um, just beautifully. But the, the breakthrough was, could you actually make a heart valve and this is today's market leading valve, the Sapien 3 heart valve. Right. Could you make a heart valve like this before the procedure, squeeze it down onto a balloon catheter, mm -hmm. and then during the procedure, uh, be able to introduce it in a small hole in the upper thigh, advance it to the Incredible. diseased heart valve, open it up, and as shown in this model, actually immediately start opening and closing, beating, and keeping Within the patient alive. Within how much time? When you so the whole procedure takes often less than an hour, it, and often do people... What would be what? How many hours and how much time lost? It would be and hours, and your blood would be pumped through a and heart a lung machine. would stay in the and hospital the, the for long, how long? That's the, that's the bigger issue. I'd say typically, especially the older patients, they would be in the hospital for more than a week, and then even once they got home from the hospital, it was a tough recovery. Right. Often there'd be cognitive deficits. So we could when go can on for months. When people go back to work after they have? Well, it's, uh, the rate has been falling. So as these procedures improve, and they've been improving right. a lot, it's just a matter of days now. That's there's incredible. there's this been is a the number most major, of procedures. Almost the most, one of the most major surgeries there is. There's procedures, uh, there are a lot of procedures now where patients are going home the next day. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, not even going through anesthesia, just a small deadening <laughs> of the site, and they're awake, and their physician is speaking to them while the procedure is going okay, on. Okay, we always hear about the runaway cost of health care. I mean, this is just a very solid example. I know something. Some of the leaders, literature says it's about thirty thousand, but that is versus what would be maybe three, ten times. Yeah, you, the way you want to think about it is the total cost of the procedure. Right, so the right. total cost of the old procedure versus the new one is actually it's quite effective to do it the new way. It's not very often where we have these incredible technologies where you get better outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. Better mortality, less strokes. Right. You get improved quality of life for these patients, which is a big deal, right. and you have better economics. This is one of those triple wins. Do we have to be concerned about anything that's going on in Washington right now with the debate over health care and your products? In our case, not really. Most of our patients are over 65, so they're already covered by Medicare. Right. And so we really are not very affected by what's going on in today's debate. Plus, our products are, are life-saving for the critically ill. Right. Yeah. Now, you're, all times you do have a lot of different products in, that are being tested. You've got some right now, pretty revolutionary, right, that are in the pipe. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So there's a few things going on. One is this group of patients that we're treating today with this aortic stenosis, right. they're still largely undertreated. Maybe less than less than 20 percent of these patients. I was shocked when I read that. There's more than 600,000 people, and only 20. How is that possible? Is that someone not doing their job? Not no, it's a, it's it's easy to misdiagnose. But it just oh. seems like you're getting old. You're losing your energy. Right. Yeah, you're you're out of breath. Not yeah, like maybe, us. Yeah, exactly. And so it gets misdiagnosed, and sometimes. Sometimes they don't move through the system, but okay. the fact is this disease is like a cancer, right? Wow. Well, anyway, it just gets worse. You have yeah. done a remarkable job. It's long been one of my favorites. That's Mike Musell. I'm chairman and CEO of Edwards Life Sciences, EW. I do not think this stock is done going up because I think it's a revolutionary technology company, and they keep doing great things. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.